Hi, and welcome to Exploring with the Estuarium. My name is Ariel and I'll be your educator. Today, we're at Burfoot County Park exploring the intertidal zone right here in Olympia. Burfoot Park is a Thurston County Park located near Boston Harbor on Bud Inlet. The park is 50 acres with trails, shelters, and a play area. The trails lead from the beautiful forest along a creek to an estuary. The creek running through Burfoot Park meets with the saltwater of Bud Inlet at the base of the beach trail. Burfoot Park offers 1,100 feet of Puget Sound Beach. Before we explore the intertidal zone, we first need to learn beach etiquette. Be a good beach steward and respect the creatures and their dwelling places. Walk on bare spots as much as possible. Walk slowly and carefully. There's life beneath your feet. Observe and leave animals where you find them. Touch animals gently with one wet finger. If you pick up animals, stay low to the ground so they won't have far to fall if they are dropped. Leave shells, rocks, and driftwood on the beach. They are used by animals for shelter. Only overturn rocks that you can turn with one hand. Overturn them with care. When you have finished looking, return rocks gently to their original position to avoid crushing anything that lives underneath. Fill any holes you may have created when digging for creatures. Piles of sand left on the beach can smother other organisms. Leave creatures attached to rocks, rather than removing them for study, since removal may kill them. Please, only remove trash from the beach, nothing else. Vegetation and shellfish attach themselves to rocks and shells. Now that we know the rules of being a good beach steward, let's explore the intertidal zone. Burfoot's intertidal zone is full of algae and kelp. On the beach, you can find sugar kelp and sea noodles. One of the most prominent green algae you'll see is seed lettuce, which gets its name because it looks like green leaf lettuce and is also edible. Many sea creatures, such as kelp crabs and sea slugs, love to munch on the abundance of intertidal seaweeds and grasses. Marine animals also like to use it as habitat to lay eggs and to hide from predators. One group of animals that uses vegetation to blend in is worms. Tube worms build a tube-like structure which sticks up out of the sand. If you look across a beach, it looks like someone might have cut down plants, leaving behind little stems. The tubes are made from chitin and are flexible. Another worm that builds a tube fortress is the bamboo worm. Bamboo worms can also be found in the intertidal zone with their tubes hiding amongst the vegetation. Also taking shelter under the sand are sand dollars. Related to sea urchins, sand dollars also use their spines to move around on the seashore. The petal pattern on top are pores used for breathing. Most sand dollar beds are large since they live in colonies. In one square yard, there can be over 500 sand dollars. They congregate at the top of the sediment when the tides are coming or going, because that means it's feeding time. A bed of sand dollars can change the current of the water to bring plankton to them so that they don't have to forage for food. When they tilt up to feed, the edges of the sand dollars stick out into the water column, creating a microcurrent, bringing food to them. They then use their tube feet to move prey down their food grooves into their mouth. Have you ever seen something on the beach that looks like a broken plunger or part of a tire washed on shore or sitting in the intertidal zone? Well, it's not plastic or trash. It is the egg casing of a moon snail called an egg collar. The moon snail secretes a layer of mucus to glue sand particles together in a collar shape around their shell. Then the moon snail lays a set of eggs on the inside of the sand casing, followed by a second layer of sand to seal the eggs inside. The eggs will incubate inside the egg collar until the little moon snails hatch out as larvae with their very own shell. The moon snail shell grows with the snail as it gets bigger. If a moon snail feels threatened, they will squeeze their body back inside their spiral shell and will shut the door to their shell called an operculum. These snails are voracious predators hunting down clams and other bivalves. The moon snail secretes hydrochloric acid and has a tongue called a radula that it uses to drill into shells of its prey. Here you can see the leftovers from a moon snail feast. They're shells from butter clams and horse clam. Horse clams are bivalve mollusks that inhabit the intertidal zone. They have a white shell that doesn't fully close. The horse clam siphon sticks out like a neck and cannot completely retract back into their shell. When walking on the beach at low tide, 
you can see the horse clam siphon sticking out through the sand. The horse clam's body is usually 12 to 16 inches below the surface of the sand. They use their siphon to filter feed. The horse clam draws in water through one opening in the siphon, filtering out plankton and detritus, and then expel the filtered water out the other opening. When disturbed, horse clams can shoot water out of their siphon at predators to scare them away. This gives the horse clam time to retract the siphon back down into the sand, making it difficult for the predator to get to them. If you look at the beach during low tide, you can see other clams shooting water out of the ground like geysers. So be careful where you step or you might get water squirted at you. Red rock crabs can be seen scurrying in the waters at low tide. Red rock crabs get their name due to their red color. They usually measure less than six inches across and have large front claws that are tipped black. You can tell the difference between male and female crabs by the shape of their tail flap. Males have a triangle or lighthouse shaped tail and females have a round tail flap that covers most of their abdomen. Mating for red rock crabs occurs during the summer when they are in the soft shell state of molting. The males will often guard a female who is preparing to molt by holding her under his abdomen. Once the eggs are fertilized, the female will protect and carry the eggs under her tail flap. She holds them until they hatch and release into the water as microscopic larvae. Crabs use seaweed and fallen logs as shelter from predators such as birds. Birds love to hunt the intertidal zone for small crabs and fish. Gulls scour the beach for mussels and clams that they can pick up and drop from the sky to break open the hard shells. Great blue herons can be seen wading in the water using their keen eye to spot fish or crabs hiding below the water surface. With a quick strike, their bill pierces through the water as they snatch their prey. Burfoot Park is a great place to experience the intertidal zone so close to downtown Olympia. Next time you go explore during low tide, remember your beach etiquette and please be respectful of the animals that call the Puget Sound home. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Exploring with the Estuarium. If you liked our video, give it a thumbs up. And if you wish to continue to get more of our educational videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook at the Puget Sound Estuarium. Bye.